I just poured this all over myself. Who is starting? <laughs> Do I always start? No, not always. Okay. Do you want me to start because you feel like you always start? Yeah, why not? Okay. Um, I don't have a how goes it. What What do I say? What do I say? What do I say? What do I say when I greet people? I don't even know. <laughs> <laughs> I know, like, okay, I feel so stupid right now because I can't. I don't know how to start this episode. Hey, Allie girl. Well, now I'm all thrown up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, hey. I love you. You're my best friend. I can't say Celesty girl. I'm pretty sure we ran into this like three episodes ago. We did run into this already. And I love the expression on your face was like very torn and you knew not to go there. And yet you still weren't sure of the words that should come out of your mouth. It was a whole moment. I loved it. (laughs) It just every time going forward, I'll come up with something new. I promise. Okay, that's fine. That's fine. I'm here for it. I can't wait to see what that is. How was your day today, my love? Interesting and full of twists and turns. That is my version of how goes it, because I don't say how goes it, but I, that that was my attempt at, at that. But twists and turns definitely sounds interesting indeed. Why twists and turns? Just crazy shit? Crazy work day, and then my child smashed his face into the floor. He is, remember that one time when we called him like a little evil Knievel minus the evil? That's still applicable. Very true. He is 100% okay, (laughs) by the way. I'm so very glad he's 100% okay. Kiss on his sweet little face for me, though, because that is not fun. He handled it like an absolute champ and was fine two seconds later with the popsicle, so he's stronger and tougher than I will ever be. Uh, Same, because even just hearing you tell me about his injuries, I wanted to fucking cry. So, yeah, he's tough. (laughs) How was your day? My day was fantastic, actually, uh, for no particular reason. Just got a lot done. It was very productive. Static had a small owie that he had to have taken care of today, but it's no big deal. And I just I just did. I had a really great day. Went to the gym. I think that's what I did today. I, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure that's what I did today. That does sound like an amazing day. And now we're here. I know. Productive, lots of shit done. My cat is okay. Went to the gym. I got a nice little tan going on from my daily gym routine. I'm just, I'm feeling it. I'm loving it. Here I am. Ta-da! How do you have a tan from your gym routine? Because as part of my gym routine, see, check it, check it, check it. I'm tan. Oh, nice. As part of my gym routine, I work out for however long I'm working out for the day, right? Whether that's an hour or couple hours and then as part of like my cool down for my gym routine I hit the tanning bed for 10 minutes and then I also hit the light therapy room I have a gym membership at planet fitness it's my favorite and uh, those things are commodities that are available with my gym membership so I go tanning every day for 10 minutes just because it helps me relax, like my, helps my muscles relax after the gym. And also then like my skin is moisturized and I don't feel nasty, sweaty, gross. And then when I get home, I can shower and I just don't like I'm washing away all kinds of stuff, not just sweat. And I feel more productive that way. I get what you mean. That did just make me sound a little psychotic. Yeah, a little Patrick Bateman. A little bit, but I'm over it. And zero fucks given. Absolutely zero fucks given because I have a really fantastic little glow. The glow up is real. And yeah, I love it. I'm super proud of the progress that I'm seeing from the gym and the nice little sun kiss moment to compliment that. Meanwhile, I'm over here in ghost mode, fully channeling my inner like Casper. My inner transparency on the outside. going great i love your face and you're so beautiful and i love your new hair color it is fucking fire 
I didn't really get to see it as much last week because the screen was split between you and Tyler and I know that you have made some changes to it recently. I fucking love it. Thank you. I am very happy to have covered up the green. Although green is my favorite color, it was not my favorite color for myself on my head. It was it was intense. That's all. It, I mean, I think you could have gone with a different kind of green, more of like an earth tone green or a jewel tone green. The green that you had just had a little bit too much vibrancy in it that you're right it it kind of washed you out a little bit but this this balance that you have found is muy bueno Ooh, muy bueno that means very good in spanish oh hey thank you <laughs> spanish class level one you're so welcome that's about the extent of my spanish speaking skills Same just so everyone here. knows i'm going to be very honest about that <laughs> So I love that we kind of sort of a little bit touched on some self-care things that we do and ways that we treat ourselves. That seems to go hand in hand with today. Stay tuned for the next like, I don't know, three minutes. But before we get into that, would we like to, of course we would like to, this is our fucking show and this is what we do here. Shall we talk about what we're drinking? I would love to, but there's one thing I want to say super quick. Okay. Hey, if there's anybody new here. Welcome to Taboos. We're a podcast that talks about taboo culture. Hi. Uh, so yeah, I'm so excited that you're here. If you're new, welcome. Uh, Apparently, I just, I don't know. I don't know what happened. I had like a brain aneurysm. It's fine. I just feel like we don't do that anymore. We did it last episode, but I was like, hey, we should bring that back again. I'd love to talk about what we're drinking. We did it last episode and we did it like mid episode. Like we were already like balls deep in a conversation and then we're like, oh, by the way, welcome to Taboos. What do you have in your hand? Okay, now we get to talk about what we're drinking. I'm so excited. So I have this, it's a seltzer, okay? Because honestly, as part of my just taking care of myself and whatever, and also the fact that I really don't drink anymore at all, I have found that seltzer is sort of my favorite easy drink. And especially because Festival has so many options in the single purchase area of seltzers that like it's just so much easier for me personally and I'm all about it. So I went in today with the intention of finding a beverage that was sort of punny and sort of hand in hand with this episode. And the gentleman at Festival was very helpful and very nice and he totally played along with all of my insane antics especially because I just came from the gym and I look like a fucking drowned rat and he didn't judge me and he was very nice so shout out to the nice dude at festival who helped me but I told him that I wanted this specific concept because we're celebrating February and love is love and I was like do you have a beverage with some sort of like connection to love love potion love something and he hands me this wine and he was like what do you think about this and it was a red blend and I was like "Mm, let's just look for fun So we ventured through the cases and I found this craft hard seltzer called Stray Forth, S-T-R-A-Y, Forth, like the number. And the reason I decided to go with this because the Amore, that's what the bottle was called. It just, I wasn't interested in drinking wine tonight. So I saw this can and I will show you. And I thought to myself, you know what? That looks like a psychological thing. So I went with it. Here is the can. That is awesome. And then, so it's not just her. Like, look at how cute and dainty it is. It totally is. So, okay, time out. Because this flavor is watermelon kiwi walkabout. And I said this, you make that face, okay? I detest watermelon. I detest watermelon unless it's real watermelon and it's 112 degrees outside and we are on our boat. I just don't like watermelon. I Artificial watermelon freaks me the fuck out. So I saw this can and I looked to my new friend at festival and I said, that's fucking gross. I'm not interested. I fucking hate watermelon. And he was like, okay, so please hold one moment. This is a story that just keeps on giving. It is. It really is. So I also got this one. I'm going to show you. Oh my God. I love that bottle. Can. I love that can. It, it is a can. It, it Yes, use your eyes can. And I got this one because his third eye is all knowing and magical. And this one is guava hibiscus clairvoyance. And I'm going to try this one real quick. 
while you tell me what you're drinking. Dear listeners, just to clarify the can that Celeste is currently opening has an owl on it with a third eye in the middle of its forehead and it's so cute. So cute. And she's losing her mind. So I actually don't know. I might just pass the buck back to you quick. So cute and so fucking delicious. Holy shit. Do you know what this tastes like? It tastes like a fucking Capri Sun with alcohol in it. I'm not fucking kidding. This is literally the most delicious thing I've had in my mouth in probably three weeks. So wait, did you open the other can? I did. Now I have both of them open. (laughs) So do you like the watermelon or no? I'm so confused right now. I, I am also confused because I don't hate the watermelon. It's a really good flavor. It really is a good flavor. However, I still detest watermelon. So mm, it's really good. It is. It's a lot better than I thought it would be. It isn't like a syrupy, nasty, fake watermelon flavor. And the kiwi really does offset it a lot. So I would recommend it without question. I would give it like a solid four. I personally just hate watermelon that much. So I am totally willing to drink the guava hibiscus clairvoyance and this owl with the eyes and all the things. These have natural and organic ingredients, zero carbs, zero sugar, 100 calories per serving, and they're gluten-free. And the cans, the cans themselves are fucking worth this. And seriously, between the two of them, I spent like $5.09 for both cans. And they're like legit cans. I wish there was a way to save beautiful cans like that without it looking cheesy. Dear listeners, if you have an idea, at me. Of how to do it without making us look like alcoholics. I have no ideas. Exactly. Because I also have a can that I would consider cool art. So given my crypticness of our cans, no, I need to know what you're drinking. So I actually went to the grocery store this week to specifically find a beer that I knew I liked, that I've been craving for a while, and I couldn't find it. Purple Haze by Ariba. Ariba? Ariba! Abita. Oh, not the same. Nope. By Abita Brewing Company. I cannot find this fucking beer anywhere, and I've been craving it for a couple weeks. And I also looked for Press Pineapple Basil. And no-go? At this grocery store for you. No-go. I can't find it either. So I just looked for another beer I would potentially like, and I have no idea. So I came across a cool can. Show me. Oh, look it. It's like a little demon frog being dissected. What is that called? But I'm not holding it upside down. Oh, it's a, it's a face. It's not a demon frog at all. Nope. And look at the... Oh, I love him. His little his little devil face. But look at the wording. Pineapple tangerine, tangerine express. His yeah, IPA. so it's upside down though. That's what I want you to note. It's upside down and that is important and Allie wants me to note that. See? I fucked it up real bad. No, no, you did great. You were just more intuitive on it because I was like, what the fuck is happening here? <laughs> So it is by Stone Brewing Company. This is a Tangerine Express Hazy IPA. And when I pulled it out, I was like, okay, this is clearly a misprint on the can because this label's upside down. And I was gonna <laughs> I was going to take a picture and post it on Twitter and at them and be like, What happened, yo? Idiots. You put your shit upside down. And then I looked at the rest of the case and they're all upside down. I was like, hmm. <laughs> so their slogan is Leave no stone unturned. Ooh, that's really fantastic marketing. I thought so. So yeah, it's... I love that. It's a delicious beer. I highly recommend it. And it's not... I highly recommend you. Boo. (laughs) And uh, I can actually taste the tangerine in it, which is impressive because we know my palate is far from sophisticated, so... I really appreciate that, though. And I'm really excited for you. And I hope that someday I can try it Maybe if we ever record together ever again. I'm just saying. (laughs) I have no way to move out of that. (laughs) All right. So now, may we talk about what we're talking about today? Oh, hi, me. Oh, hi, I did the double. I did the double dip. I did it. I did it. I did do that. So now we should just move forward. I would love to hear what we're talking about today. Today, we're going to continue Love is Love by talking about self-love because I truly think that self-love is a form of love that is not talked about enough. It is not spoken about correctly and it is taken for granted by people who just have this 
people who have self-love, who have not had to work for it for themselves, don't understand that not everybody has this. Not everybody just innately loves themselves. And that can manifest in a lot of different ways. And we're going to talk about it. But I thought that this episode was super, super important because this is something that I personally struggle with. Something that I am personally working on very hard and truly This concept of self-love did not even cross my radar until about three years ago when I was watching a Snapchat from Huda Beauty and she was just saying, these are the things that I am experiencing. These are the things that I felt and truly it comes down to self-love and this whole time I thought it was something else and it's not. I just don't love myself and that hit me like a ton of bricks. I'm not even joking. The way that she said it and how I felt her and how... I just knew what she was talking about at a very high level. I felt seen. I felt heard for a question that I didn't even know I should be asking. In the event that anybody else is experiencing something like that and who is unfamiliar with self-love and what it truly looks like and feels like and it's not something that comes naturally to you, I want this episode to be for you. I am dedicating this episode to you because I know what that struggle is like and I know how hard it is even to just is representative of that. And I'm so excited and I'm so honored and I'm so thrilled and I cannot wait to start this journey with you guys. I love this plan. Ooh, I see what you did there. Ooh, I love it. I love it. I'm here for it. So I want to ask you before we really get into this, I have a disclaimer, but before that, I want to ask you, why do you feel like self-love is a taboo topic? I think that self-love can be seen as being selfish or can be confused with being selfish at times. I primarily think that's it, honestly. I think society drives us to be unequivocally selfless, and I think that's really unhealthy to a degree. I couldn't agree with you more. I also have been... I don't have a right or wrong answer. This isn't a pop quiz. I really was curious about your answer because the nice gentleman at festival legitimately asked me that as I was checking out. He was like, hey, just real quick, like why is self-love a taboo topic? And I genuinely think that he thought I meant like taking an hour shower or going to the driving range or going to the gym or painting your nails, like actual acts of self-care. I think that's what he thought I meant in the sense of self-love and why would that be taboo? Why would be taking care of yourself taboo? But it's so much deeper than that and I personally really struggled with that concept contextually previous to understanding that I did not have self-love. I thought that if I did those things, if I painted my nails and I got my hair done and I went tanning and I did all those very important but very external things, that was the same as self-love. So when this light bulb occurred to me and I was like, oh, holy shit, I don't love myself at all. I was really mad at myself because I had been doing all of these things which are important. Taking care of yourself and being good to yourself is important. But I genuinely was like, I did all of those things to show myself love and I hated myself the whole time. That was a waste. I think that misunderstanding is very deeply rooted in society's perspective of self-love as a topic, that it's a very materialistic thing and it's a very outward thing but truly self-love is nothing but 100% internal and I think that that is something that society is not in a position to condone because that would mean that people have to be good to themselves and there's a lot of things that come in line with that that we probably aren't going to get into in this episode but still important to just recognize. Yeah I agree. I love that you agree. Okay. So let's start with my disclaimer because I think that that's super important. The disclaimer for this episode is Allie and I are not therapists or in any way representative of a mental health professional. Today we speak about self-love and the impacts that it can have on someone based both on research and personal experience. Lack of self-love can manifest in symptoms that can look feel, and be diagnosed as actual mental health issues. If you have concerns of those symptoms, we recommend speaking with a professional to ensure you have everything you need to be at a healthy place for yourself. I'm going to say that in layman's terms real quick. 
Somebody could believe that they have depression and they don't suffer from depression. What they don't have is self-love. And on a very superficial level, self-love and depression can look the same in the sense of just sadness and in the sense of this overwhelming feeling of failure, not being able to accept yourself, constantly striving for changes that you cannot obtain. Those things are very real in depression. And they're also very real in a lack of self-love. That is my one example. And I am saying that because when I learned about self-love, I convinced myself at the time that the things that I was experiencing was a symptom of my depression. And truly, as someone who survives every day with depression and somebody who's also on a journey of self-love, I recognize that they are not the same thing and yet the symptoms, they can feel the same. So I just, I really need you guys to hear me say, if you have any sort of negative symptom, it's okay to talk to somebody. You should talk to somebody, but it's super important to sit with yourself also because the only way that you can attain what is actually going on if it's a self-love thing is by sitting with yourself and we're going to talk about that and this is going to be a super positive lovey-dovey episode but it wouldn't be fair to go into this without the realistic expectation of we might hit some pieces that are not so super duper lovey-dovey. Are we good with that? I think that's fair. Fantastic. So let's begin by defining self-love. Self-love is defined as quote-unquote love of self or regard for one's own happiness or advantage. This has been conceptualized both as a basic human necessity and as a moral flaw, akin to vanity and selfishness, synonymous with conceitedness, egotism, and narcissism. I want to take one moment and put a big pause on the self-love piece because What's super, super important to understand about the words self-love and narcissism is that those words truly don't belong in the same paragraph at all. For anybody to think that having self-love, genuine, true, real, unconditional self-love is narcissistic does not understand what narcissism is. Yep, agreed. In understanding the definition of narcissism, you can clearly tell there are no ties that makes self-love a negative connotation. Narcissism is entirely a negative connotation. The first definition available for narcissism is selfishness involving a sense of entitlement, a lack of empathy, and a need for admiration as characterized by a personality type. The second is self-centeredness arising from failure to distinguish the self from external objects, either in very young babies or as a feature of a mental disorder. And then I went on shit. You guys, I totally didn't cite any of these sources. The self-love definition came from Wikipedia. The narcissism definitions that I just gave you came from Oxford.com. And then super fast, I just, because we're still in this narcissistic vein, I want to hit narcissistic personality disorder, which is an actual disorder. And this definition came from Mayo Clinic, a disorder in which a person has an inflated sense of self-importance. Narcissistic personality disorder is found more commonly in men. The cause is unknown, but it likely involves a combination of genetic and environmental factors. Someone could be a narcissist and not be found to have narcissistic personality disorder. That's a huge call out. Additionally, the only treatment that there is for narcissistic personality disorder is talk therapy. There is no cure. So I just want to, this is my like own personal Celeste little plug for a moment. I really struggle with people who just constantly accuse others of being a narcissist because they don't like how they react to things or maybe they're more logical than emotional. Like if y'all haven't experienced a real narcissist, I promise just don't use the word because real narcissists are unlike really anything else you've ever experienced. A good example that we can all relate to is Donald Trump. Whether you like Donald Trump or not, he's a prime example of a genuine narcissist. Just so far up his own ass that the rest of the world literally doesn't exist unless it makes sense in his mind. That is genuine narcissism. That is also not to say that narcissists can't be good people. Okay, I personally only know narcissists who are terrible fucking people, but there is a very distinguishable line between good people who are narcissists and fucking psychos. 
with narcissism. Like just because you are a narcissist doesn't mean you're a bad person. That is a huge call out also. So people just really need to stop abusing the word narcissism and or narcissist and really either do the research or stop using the word or find a narcissist and then use the word correctly. I don't really fucking know. Find a narcissist and use the word correctly. I highly don't recommend that one. (laughs) I also highly don't recommend that one. So I did this little side-by-side moment of a narcissistic statement or how a narcissist would be looked at versus what someone with self-love would be looked at. Kind of like my own little Celeste definitions. So a narcissist would be kind of in the perception of everyone should love me no matter what I do because I'm the most amazing thing to ever happen to the fucking world and I shit gold and I'm magic and bow down peasants. That's a very narcissistic personality, okay? Like if somebody thinks like that and talks like that and acts like that, it's very likely that they're a narcissist. Someone with self-love would take the position of no one owes me anything. I don't owe anybody else anything. I simply love myself the way that I am, but I also love others. I give myself patience, forgiveness, acceptance, encouragement, and these things all make me a better version of myself so that I can be good for other people. That's the difference. Narcissists only care about themselves, whereas people with self-love care about themselves and know the difference between a boundary and just flying by the seat of your fucking pants and doing whatever somebody else says. And that is the huge distinguishing factor. So I just wanted to point blank say that in a very textual way. Yeah, I think the main point is that people who have self-love don't shit on everybody else. Correct. And I have actually found that I personally, right? Like, again, this is me speaking from personal experience. I'm less inclined to give a single fuck about what anyone else has going on in a catty way or in a gossipy way or even in like a getting sucked into the drama kind of moment because it disrupts my self-peace so much and I'm just not willing to go there, which I've never been able to say in my life. I'm totally the person who's like, ooh, drama? Like, let me just listen, right? (laughs) Let me listen and offer an opinion. And truly, lately, I just don't care. I don't care because it doesn't serve me anything and it's just negative energy that I don't need near me. And I've honestly like, never been happier, which sounds like really weird, but it's real. So, okay, there. I just awkwardly like segued us to my next point. I don't know. (laughs) So I found this article that is called Why Do People Have So Little Self-Love? And the article came from exploringyourmind.com. And this I thought was really, really interesting. So the article says, children need to feel secure whether the feeling comes from their parents or a significant figure in their lives where they have secure attachment. In any case, stability and trust will give them a future as emotionally strong, secure adults with healthy self-esteem. However, it's easy to see that very few people truly display these characteristics. Most aren't secure in themselves and don't trust their abilities and can't evaluate themselves realistically. So I want to pause right there for one second. As my best friend, how many times have you complimented me in not in a physical way based off of my talent or my intelligence or whatever and you are so proud of me and you tell me that and I legitimately shoot you down because I don't believe you. I don't I find value in what you say to me because I love you and you're my best friend but I don't find value in what you say in applied to me in that situation. Does that happen? Have I ever done that? I can only count as high as numbers I have digits, so more than those. So more than 20 times is what you're saying. I don't know where you're getting... Yep. Wow. (laughs) Do you want to count your tattoos too real quick while we have time? So that number times about a billion. (laughs) Okay, fantastic. So... I recognize that I do that. I recognize that I did that because, you know what? Fuck it. Do or did. I still do this, okay? My journey of self-love is a fucking work in progress. So I know I still do this, which is why I made it about myself. I'm not trying to be narcissistic. I'm saying from my experience, this is real. This is a thing. And I really sat with this thought and I was curious if at any point in my life I did have self-love and I, I genuinely don't know. But it brought me to the place of, I believe that at one point, every single person has experienced self-love in the form of when they're a baby. Because really think about this with me. 
how how many things do babies do that we praise unconditionally, right? You stood up, you walked, you didn't choke on this puff. Like, like we celebrate everything babies do as adults. We are number one hype girl status anytime a baby is near us, right? Is that real? Yep, agreed. So I think that at some point we've all experienced self-love because at some point we were all babies Duh, that's how humans work. I'm new to this planet, so I felt like explaining it to you. But I really think about at what age does that stop? At what age does everything we do stop being this like celebratory thing? And instead of celebrating what we are doing, suddenly like punishment and criticism and hesitation and second guessing or questioning of somebody else's actions come into play at a really, really young age. And obviously that piece is not applicable to everybody, but I really thought about that in this, not only research, but as I've been thinking about this as a whole, like at some point we take self-love away from children because we stop celebrating the fact that they're children and that they're their own humans. And we start piling all these fucking rules and all these concepts on them that they're too little to understand and digest because their emotional processor does like five things. I don't know. I, I don't even know if that's relevant. I don't know if we caught that. I don't know if that's a tangent. I don't know if you have thoughts. I want to hear them. But that really fucked with me when I thought about it. I think a lot of that is because there's a tipping point where social construct becomes a thing and expectations are more important than small individual achievements. Bigger individual achievements are expected and like the small ones are swept under the rug. I think that's a really important call out. And I'm not saying that everybody should celebrate every time I successfully go to the bathroom and wipe my own ass. I don't want that. That's not what I'm asking for. Also, I'm not saying that Tiny should have that. Like she's seven. You should be able to wipe your own ass at this point. Like congratulations. But truly, just, just, I don't even know how to approach it better but I just think about all the times that I hear or even that I have personally said to a child that they should do something different or they should think differently or try something different that took them away from what was genuinely making them happy and it's not because I wanted to make them unhappy but it's because as an adult I thought I knew better. Yeah I agree with that and just kind of a small example that I can think of Say a child or even a teenager brings home just a regular paper from school that they get an A on and they did good on it. It's just a regular paper. They get an A. Excellent. Great job. They bring home a test that was really important that they get an A on. Awesome job. We're going to go out for dinner and celebrate that. It's still an A. It's a great grade, but there's a differentiation between the degree of importance in those things, even though to the teenager, they're just as important and we need to recognize that. That is a fantastic, tangible example, and I cannot even tell you how much I love you right now for that being your example, because that's fantastic. That is a legitimate and real and amazing example of exactly what I was talking about, and I love that you brought it to a place of teenage years, because I truly feel like this application of self-love is a make or break moment by the time you're a teenager. By the time you're a teenager, you either have it or you don't. Like there is no more middle ground. And just because you don't have it doesn't mean you can't get it. Hello, my name is Celeste. I am on a self-love journey. I am super proud of that. I will be the first to fucking tell you that I have not had it before. I'll be the first to tell you that I am my own worst enemy. Like, I have been that person for myself, and I have been up against some real fucking enemies, okay? I'm just saying, you can find it. But by the time you're a teenager, it's really established that you do or don't. And I think that things like that, that example specifically, can make or break a kid into having it or not having it. Maybe not one test versus one paper, but think about how many tests you have in a year. Think about how many papers you have in a year. If that's really just the example we're running with, that is legitimately, you have more papers in a year than you do tests. So if you ace every single fucking paper, maybe you don't do great on tests. I'm a terrible test taker. I can totally relate to that. Same. But if I knock, but if I knock every single paper out of the park, I deserve to be proud of that. Even if that means for myself, right? Right. Like, that is such a big deal. 
That's what we're talking about. And this is such an abstract thought, but just because it's abstract doesn't mean that it's not real and it doesn't mean it's not important. This is something that people experience. So we're going to keep rolling on this train. So the article continues to say, Why is it so hard to find a human with unconditional self-love? It seems like a lack of self-love, care, consideration, and respect in childhood might be the origin of low self-esteem. Other possible causes include overprotective parents, not having clear limits set, and culture. There is no point in blaming our insecurities on our past, our upbringing, or our parents. These things can't be changed. As an adult, it's time to heal that child who has lacked so much and help them love themselves, no matter what other people think. So then the article talks about people who have things missing and how even people who are defined by a societal perspective are very successful are still missing self-love. I actually know a lot of people like that who are really, really successful and who have beautiful lives and successful in whatever way that means, whether that's in money or in relationships or in career or in education, like just successful or or maybe they're even just attractive fucking people, right? Like there are real statistics to prove that successful people are usually very good looking. Like that's a real thing. So successful in whatever that means and yet still don't have self-love. Quote, when people have little self-love, or if it's not unconditional, they feel like they're missing a piece of the puzzle. They might mistakenly try to find it elsewhere, but the pieces they find never seem to fit into the empty space. So I wanted to ask you, Allie, my best friend and love of my life, have you ever had a coping mechanism that you've used in place of self-love? A coping mechanism that you have used to escape the way that you feel about yourself. Do you have that? Have you ever had that? I'm honestly not certain. I mean, in high school, I used to self-harm, but I'm not sure if it's... I feel like it could be related to that, yes. As an adult, just denial (laughs) was my coping mechanism. Uh, I'm I'm very different now, though, so I love myself now, so I don't have those coping mechanisms because they're not needed. But back then I would say I would attribute those things, yes. But I didn't have like a specific thing I did. That's fair. That's totally fair. And I really appreciate you being super honest and honestly thinking about that. Like I saw your gears turning. I know you gave that genuine thought. So I really appreciate your authenticity in that moment. I also want to say on the concept of you, in the entire time that I have personally known you, I have never known you to not love yourself. And I want to give a huge shout out moment to you in being my constant reminder that I need to love myself. Even when I didn't, even when I was not in a place of loving myself and no matter how annoying I was because I didn't love myself, you were constantly a pillar of this is what self-love looks like. You were that for me. So I, I just honestly owe you a big thank you for that and how I just want to tell you how grateful I am and how much I appreciate you for just even just that being that for me was a really big deal. Wow. Uh, are you gonna, Are you crying? No, I'm, I'm not crying? crying. I'm sorry to Can make you cry disappoint you (laughs) (laughs) I was so red I like held my breath and everything I just want you to realize that I accept myself for who I am because a long time ago I realized that I was this weird not quite normal puzzle piece of society and I was never going to be and you are also this beautiful strange puzzle piece in society that is allowed to be just exactly that so and together we made this beautiful little puzzle we're only two pieces that does not equate to a puzzle did you not see my two hands come I only have two fucking hands Allie and I did this (laughs) I don't, what did you want from me? I can have Axel's paw. He's right here. Do you want me to add another paw? No, I feel like now we're, now we're doing, here's the church. <laughs> here's the steeple. Doors? Doors? Open the doors and see all the people? We don't go to church. I don't fucking know how this goes. We don't. I don't know how church works. So there's people, but I don't know how to get there. So some things that I know that I have done. Are you okay? There's people, but I don't know how to get there. <laughs> It's real. It's real. So some things I know that I have done in place of self-love are sex. (laughs) I am the worst. (laughs) 
I'm laughing because I'm super embarrassed by I'm super embarrassed by this in myself. Not that I did this, but I'm super embarrassed that I did this in the sense of I did it to fill a void that I didn't know existed. Like it doesn't change the fact that I love sex. I'm not ashamed of any of the sex that I've had, but sex was my unhealthy coping mechanism along with relationships, work, And in my life, I have turned to alcohol as a coping mechanism for my lack of self-love. And I want to say this. I didn't know I was turning to those things as a coping mechanism. I didn't know that I was drinking the way I was drinking because I didn't love myself. I didn't know that I was diving face first into work that would consume my life and I would have no time, energy, or mental capacity to take care of myself as a distraction from not loving myself. Like I didn't commit to those things with the intention of, oh, this will distract me from how much I hate myself. Like I didn't do that consciously. And yet I recognize All of those things were exactly that. Like, I know that about myself. I'm being super transparent about that because that's real. I really, really, really did that for a long time. Yeah, I can definitely see that looking back on it. For me or for you? Who are we talking about? You. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, thank you for affirming that. (laughs) Sorry. Thank you for affirming that for me. Now our listeners know that I'm not a fucking liar. Like, that's what we've accomplished. (laughs) Amazing. I I saw you climbing this ladder and I was like, hi, let me do the knock you down this (laughs) rung. Oh, you made it to the top? Take that, bitch. That's what I'm here for. This concept is a huge psychological cause for addictions of any form, like whether that be drugs or sex or gambling or alcohol, it does not matter. The lack of self-love is actually the number one cause of addiction. However, nobody talks about it that way until the problem is already out of control. I personally think that that piece is a huge distinguishing factor as to why addiction is a mental health illness instead of a crime. Like addiction should not be treated as criminal behavior. It should be treated as a mental health issue. And we're going to talk about that in another episode. Stay tuned. We we are going to get into that probably in a couple different ways because I know that we want to talk about addiction on several levels. Agreed. So, I mean, that's going to come up, but Just keep in mind, like, addiction stems from this place, which is why this is so important. A direct quote from this article says, There are many different reasons why one might be missing that elusive piece, some of which we've mentioned previously, childhood, culture, etc. The way that they grow up systemically punishes self-love and views it as selfish. So, to your point earlier, yes, like, I think the reason that self-love is considered taboo is because it makes you sound like a selfish asshole. But just because you love yourself does not mean that you're selfish. There's a huge difference there. Children get used to rejecting compliments, talking down on themselves, saying yes when they really want to say no, and a lot of other unhealthy behaviors. We've always been taught that we should put others before ourselves, but that's false. We can't be there for others properly if we haven't first satisfied our own needs, if we haven't made ourselves a priority first. This supposed selfishness makes us bad people and makes others reject us. Because we don't want that to happen, we do everything to satisfy other people and neglect our own needs. I legitimately wrote in my special guest notebook, holy fuck, I'm guilty of this. Yep. Do you want to knock me down another rung real quick? I'm giving you the chance. I just said, yeah. Okay, wait. Because of the internet delay, I didn't hear it until I was already speaking. Good thing we're on two tracks. I have another note that says, this is not just some sappy feel-good shit. This is real shit. I wrote that (laughs) in my super emotional moment. (laughs) Okay, so there is a real thing called self-love therapy. And the website that I got this information from is rehabspot.com. Self-love therapy is an important part of clinical treatment for addiction to drugs and alcohol. It teaches patients how to improve their lives and put themselves in a position of positivity to steer them away from temptation. The importance of self-love and self-love therapy is described as this. 
Quote, self-love therapy is a key component of learning how to live a life of value as we become aware of our self-worth and emotional well-being. Self-love can be defined as any positive feeling we have towards ourselves, such as compassion for ourselves, the way we treat ourselves, as well as the support we have for ourselves. Common examples of self-love therapy teaches include loving oneself despite one's flaws, not feeling guilty in saying no, self-awareness, self-knowledge, and being comfortable with one's own shortcomings. Additional examples include valuing one's own health and well-being, valuing one's personal relationships, and maintaining self-care routines. The article continues to say, quote, Self-love therapy focuses on notions of acceptance, comfortability, and respect for oneself and is a powerful healing method, encouraging positive self-esteem. In addition to self-love, other traits such as self-compassion and self-respect go hand in hand to enhance our sense of self. I know I just threw a lot of therapy stuff at you, but before I continue on this, I just want to be really clear. The reason that I brought in this self-love therapy as it relates to addiction is because I go back to A lot of people turn to very unhealthy habits as coping mechanisms for their lack of self-love. If no one has ever explained that to you before, please hear me say that. Please hear me say that you are allowed to love yourself. You are deserving of loving yourself. And if you participate in things that make you happy and that help you feel that you love yourself, go ahead. Like, It is your life. It is your choice. Do what you need to do. But please make sure you're making those decisions from a place of self-love because otherwise it is just another expression of self-hate. And I don't want anybody to hate themselves because it is literally the worst feeling there is. Then my special guest notebook goes on to say this thing that I wrote about self-love because I think this is important. Self-love therapy doesn't have to be paid therapy. I'm not going to a therapist to work through my self-love. And I think that that's equally important. I am not in any way discrediting anybody in their journey to heal, okay? If you need help, get help. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing to be ashamed of in that. I personally know that if I don't do this myself, I will just start another unhealthy cycle that will distract me from dealing with this myself. So I don't even want to open the door of talking to a therapist about my self-love component because I will literally, I know myself well enough, I will just find an excuse to not talk about it. I'll just talk about something else. I'll talk about a more tangible problem that's more understandable. I'll talk about my depression because that is a clinical, real thing that somebody can look at and be like, yep, I know exactly what you're talking about. But in the aspect of self-love, Even therapists don't always know what this means to people. And I can tell you that because I have attempted to talk through this with people and they just don't understand what I'm talking about. They think I mean that I'm depressed because I have experienced depression. It's not the same. There is a drastic difference between any depressive mood that I've ever been in, any any situation I've ever been in depressive state compared to the unadulterated, pure, dark hatred that I have had for myself in my life. They're not the same thing. For people who know what I'm talking about, you know what I'm talking about. For people who don't know what I'm talking about, just know they're not the same thing. And it's okay that you don't know the difference. That's a really great thing for you and I'm very happy for you. So I want to ask you, as somebody who has been very in touch with their inner peace and self-love for a long time. I mean, again, given the fact that the whole time we've been friends, you've always had this from my perspective. What are some of the things that you do to show yourself self-love? Like like self-love therapy for yourself, even if that's not necessarily in a, I recognize this is a therapeutic thing. How do you show yourself self-love? So... Working out is one of my huge things to prioritize my own mental and physical health and putting myself first. And it's something that gives me great joy. So putting that first, overall, just realizing that there are instances where I can 
put myself first or say no or turn down things and that's okay. I used to be a people pleaser and want to say yes to everything, but ever since having Moose, me time is very important to me and quiet time is very important to me and just time to turn my brain off is huge. I'm definitely not a yes man anymore and that to me 100% is self-love. I couldn't agree with you more and I really appreciate that being your answer. I love every single thing of that. Every single second of that answer I loved. I think one other thing too is ever since meeting Nick, I've just been true to who I am. I just really don't care about what society says I should be. I am a really weird individual by society standards and I just simply don't care. I still haven't heard WAP, if that says anything. And I'm still mad about it. I just need you to know that. Like, I love you and all of your weirdness, and I am still pissed that you have not heard WAP. I'm mad about it. I'm not going to lie. But I think that's one huge thing is just full acceptance of yourself. I couldn't agree more. And actually, I think that's a fantastic segue into something that I have found is my biggest thing in loving myself. The biggest component for me in loving myself is being honest. And that's not to say that I'm over here a little liar, okay? I hate lying. Like, ooh, There are few things in this world that make my blood boil the way that lying does. I don't care who it is. If it's tiny, if it's my mother, if it's my fucking cat, I don't care. Someone lies to my face. Don't make that face at me, Axel. Axel, it's not Axel, it's static. Static lies, static tries to get away with all kinds of shit. Don't make that face at me. If someone lies to me, I literally, full-blown Italian, I will pop off. Even in my little pacifist self, I just, lying is a huge no for me. And yet, I lied to myself every day about everything for 28 years of my life. And that's insane. That's absolutely insane. It, it's crazy. So I want to expand on this, but super quick. Previous to my self-love journey this time, I can genuinely attest I've tried to do this before and I've never been successful. And I've never been successful for a few reasons and we're going to talk about those later. But one of the common themes in some of the approaches that I took were like self-help books, right? Because again, I want to take care of this myself. I don't want to talk to somebody else about this. I want to define this for myself and be successful in this. And also the therapy that I've tried to take for this has not been what I need it to be to address the real problem. So I turn to self-help books and all of them say, be honest with yourself. The concept of being honest with yourself for someone who does not love themselves is literally the most terrifying thing that there is. I have some very real fears. I'm afraid of rabbits and heights and needles and bears and guns and knives and I'm I'm afraid of all kinds of shit. And there is nothing, there was nothing I was more afraid of than being honest with myself. To the point I genuinely couldn't do it. I couldn't I couldn't tell myself the truth about anything, good or bad. If I felt like I was in a place where my body was in a place that I could be proud of, I would lie to myself and tell myself I looked fat, even though my eyes didn't see that, even though my brain didn't see that. I would tell myself I looked like a fat piece of shit. I would say those words to myself. Do you know how damaging that is to your psyche when you say those things to yourself? That is directly antithetical to self-love. And it's a lie. It's a lie. Another example of ways that I used to lie to myself would be if somebody said, hey, do you want to do this with me? Do you want to go to the gym with me? And I would say yes, because the idea of going to the gym and the idea of making this person happy and the idea of those two things being attainable at the same time made me happy. And yet I wasn't happy in that decision at all because I didn't want to go to the gym. I didn't want to do that. I didn't want to be in that environment at that time. And yet I still said yes because saying yes felt better for someone else than it did myself. I have had in my whole life up to this point zero concept of boundaries. I have never been good at that because I have always wanted to make other people happy. And I would lie to myself to the point of saying This makes you happy because someone else is happy. That's a terrible thing. It is a disgusting, hard, terrible habit to break. But I promise 
if you can break that, there is nothing but gold and rainbows and sunshine and fucking amazing R&B music playing on the other end of that rainbow. Like, it is amazing. That's what I had to say about that. I'm literally just trying to think of any boys to men song right now. (laughs) I just, I really mean that. I really feel that way. So I think your other point about like being at the gym and working out, that's a huge thing for self-love too. Um, But I want to take it to a different place and a different perspective. As someone who has recently found this and has recently made the flip, I did a full 180. I can feel it. I can tell. And maybe if we were in person, you'd be able to tell too. I don't know. Maybe you can tell from not in person, but I really just wanted to make a dig at the fact that we're not together because I miss you so fucking bad. But when people say, I go to the gym from a place of self-hate. That meant jack shit to me. Going to the gym didn't mean anything because in my brain, in my mind, in my perspective, physically being at the gym and physically working out was completely useless. It didn't mean anything to me. It wasn't fulfilling. I did not recognize until recently that this concept of quote unquote going to the gym or quote unquote working out in whatever that means to you. And I only use air quotes because who knows what that means, whether that's lifting or pole or who the fuck knows, but you have to do it with the intention of it being good for you. You have to want to do that. When I go to the gym, I legitimately don't talk to anybody. I don't want to talk to anybody. The gym is my place to be by myself. If you don't want to go to the gym, Find something else that forces you to be by yourself. Sit with yourself. Color in a coloring book. Read a book. Do something by yourself. And if that idea scares you, there's a reason why. If you feel like you can't be by yourself for a few hours and sit with your own thoughts and have a conversation with yourself, there's a reason why. There is a huge difference between isolation and sitting with yourself. And I am not talking about just being antisocial. That does not do you any good. If you are sitting by yourself in a dark dungeon room and you're watching Netflix for 18 hours and you're like, oh, look, I sat by myself. I have accomplished this. That's not what I'm talking about. I genuinely mean you must sit with yourself. Have these hard conversations with yourself. Find that kid that we were talking about before, who maybe got all the A's on the papers, but not the A's on the test scores and was ridiculed and made to feel like a fucking idiot. Find that kid. Forgive that kid. Love that kid. Sit with that kid. That kid is still with you. They're in you. Every version of ourselves that we've ever been is obtainable. So just find the version that's broken. And I say that in a nonchalant casual way, but I don't mean it in a nonchalant casual way because it's really hard. But you can do it. And it's literally the most beautiful thing ever. And I don't ever want to go back to hating myself ever again. I don't even know if I could at this point. Well, first, I just want to say thank God. (laughs) I know you've been waiting a long time. You've just been constantly like checking your watch. Like, when is this bitch going to get here? Could you? Could you go back to that place? No, I could not. Other things I personally do are congratulate myself when I've done something or accomplished something that was hard, like a really solid workout. I'm such a dork. The other day I was leaving the gym and I legitimately got in the car and I clapped for myself and I was like, that was a fucking amazing workout. I'm really proud of you. You killed that shit. I said those words to myself. And do you know what? I meant them. I was just as sincere had I said them to you because I would never lie to you. I wouldn't say those words to you unless I meant them. That's the difference. The other huge piece, which I kind of said before, but just point blank, forgiving yourself. Forgiving yourself for the shitty relationship. Forgiving yourself for staying in a job you didn't love too long. Forgiving yourself for not starting your journey sooner. It's okay to forgive yourself for the mistakes that you have made that got you to the point you're in. Mistakes are a natural part of life. There's no reason to punish yourself for that unless you're a racist or a pedophile or a homophobe. Like, punish yourself all you want. But for normal fucking people, I mean, you know what? I'm gonna take that back. I'm gonna take that back because racists and pedophiles and homophobes deserve to love themselves too. Maybe if they love themselves, they wouldn't be terrible fucking human beings so to all of those people who fall into those categories maybe try self-love but also a sharp cliff if self-love is not obtainable 
both of those journeys sound good for those types of people. But everybody else, I love that you just like... Both of those journeys probably have really interesting paths to walk. You're not wrong. But everybody else, forgive yourself for the shit that got you to where you are today. The bad shit. Embrace the good shit. Both aspects of that coin are so important. So, so, so important. Celebrate your good and forgive your bad just for you. Just do that for you, okay? It's a huge component to this. And I promise the more that you practice it, the more natural it will feel. At first, it's going to feel weird as fuck. It might actually hurt you. Complimenting myself used to hurt me. Accepting compliments from you or Kelly. I still don't like compliments. That's a huge piece I'm working on. I'm not going to lie about that. But complimenting myself is something that I work on. Forgiving myself is something that I work on because I know how necessary it is and it feels so good when done and done with the correct intention. And let me be clear, the only intention there is here is to be honest with yourself. So it shouldn't be that hard because there's literally no one looking. There's literally no one listening to what you're telling yourself in your mind. So like judgment-free zone to the next level. There we go. I don't know. I was on a tangent. Okay. I agree with all of those things 100%. Thank you for your input. I love you. So something that I actually found a lot while I was looking at self-love that was really frustrating to me because I just don't feel like it's representative in the same way is I found a lot of information about self-esteem. I do believe that there are scenarios where self-love and self-esteem. Did I just say self of steam? Yeah, I think so. I feel like I did. Trains pull into the station. Choo choo. Self of steam. Toot toot. <laughs> Apparently the only trains that exist in my mind are steam trains, so. <laughs> okay, here's me forgiving myself for that idiotic fucking comment. Let's move forward. So there is a difference. <laughs> There's a difference between self-esteem and self-love. And I think that a lot of people interchange those words. I am of the position that they are not the same thing. If you were to use them or to have someone else use them in the context of interchangeable words, they're not wrong. But I personally can distinguish a difference. And I would like to share the difference with you today in this definition that I found. So self-esteem versus self-love. I think I did the thing again, you guys. I think I did the thing. I did the thing where I didn't cite this. So I'm real sorry. I found this on the internet. Shout out to whoever I plagiarized this from. It's not actually plagiarism because I'm admitting that I didn't do it. I'm really sorry. I don't know where I got this. So quote unquote from this place that I didn't cite. Magic. I'm killing it. They are connected. However, they are uniquely different. Self-love focuses on notions of acceptance, comfortability, and respect for oneself. Self-esteem refers to the way that people perceive themselves, estimate their capacity, and estimate their value. So when I think about self-esteem, I think about it as knowing that you're really, really good at your job, right? Like that's a self-esteem thing. I know I kill at my job. Boom. Yes. Self-esteem. Check. But showing up every day, hating your body and being ashamed of your laugh or destroying yourself for making a mistake at that job, that is a lack of self-love. I could be there every day killing it, but I could also be there every day saying, you look like a fat fuck in these jeans. Those are different things. I think that self-esteem is definitely a component of it, but they're not interchangeable terms. I agree with you. They should not be. However, I feel like often society does look at self-esteem and self-love synonymously because society promotes a healthy self-esteem. What society does not promote is a healthy self-love. Does that mean that society is ignoring self-love or that society doesn't know better? I don't have that answer. I'm genuinely asking. And anybody who feels like they could speak from a societal perspective, please let us know. Do tell. You know who this makes me think of? Patrick Bateman. Have you seen American Psycho? I have. Christian Bale. Beautiful man. So on the outside, Patrick Bateman is very 
full of self-esteem and confidence and is at least attempting to be killing it in his corporate world. But in the inside, I mean, yes, he's a psychopath, but that aside. And he is killing it. Murders aside, he has no self-love. This image is what he adheres to. Like, look at his skin routine in the morning. This is his form of trying to fill the void of accepting himself and loving himself. And now we're psychoanalyzing this. So, but that's just who I thought of. I love that we're psychoanalyzing this because honestly, I wouldn't have made that connection, but I think it's a super fucking valuable connection. And I'm going to jump ahead because genuinely, that's so fucking important to me on so many levels. I have only seen American Psycho one time. You know how I do with horror films. It's not my jam, but on several levels. One, I do think given what you just explained to me and the limited information I have from the one viewing that I've had of this movie, I completely agree with you. Two, I'm not sure how American Psycho ends. So I don't know if Christian Bale like lives happily ever after and finds self-love or if he goes to prison (laughs) the rest of his life. I don't actually know that. But I think it's important For men specifically, and we are going to get into this again later, but this, this is the time. I need to say this. I think it's important that men recognize they are allowed to love themselves also. As someone who has hated themselves for a very long time and is very familiar with the signs, I recognize that on a very high level, men feel as though they are not allowed to love themselves more often than not. And we've talked about men showing emotions. We've talked about men in the bisexual community. We've talked about men in the gay community. Like we have talked about men, but I often feel like in the topic of self-love, especially in the research that I have done for myself and the therapy approaches that I've taken for myself, it's a lot easier for me as a woman to find help and to find answers. I attempted this for this episode and I have some resources that I will give a nod to at the end that I think are really important, but the number of options for resources specifically geared to men is drastically fucking lower. On this concept of self-love, There are not a ton of options out there for dudes to find ways to practice self-love. There aren't even a lot of guides out there. So, dear men who are listening right now, I am talking to you just as much as I am talking to every woman who is listening. This is important for human beings. This is not a gender thing. This is not even truly an emotional expression that you need to show other people. You will show other people when you start loving yourself. It's just natural. It just comes out. You feel happier. You are a better person. Like you do kind things because you just feel good, right? Like that's a normal thing. But this doesn't have to be like a in your feels, sappy, emotional thing if you don't want it to be. This is between you and yourself. So why would you not deserve that? That's an open question to anybody, but men specifically, because we just don't live in a place that allows men to see themselves as the hero. And I don't love that. I don't love that at all. I don't love it either, especially raising a little boy. Yeah, because he's like the most fucking incredible little boy I've ever met. And he is going to be a fucking king when he grows up. And over my dead fucking body, will he not be? Over your dead fucking body. Like, we're all going to die before he is not a king. I I swear to God. Okay, then. There's one more quote about self-esteem. None of us are dying. I, I take it back. None of us are dying. But Moose will be a king and I will see to it. We will all do that. Um. So, direct quote says... Peeper, 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 peepers, peepers. Is there anything to do with uh, what was the thing you already? I already forgot what it was. Self, oh, uh, self of steam. Self of steam. <laughs> now I feel like this episode should be called self of steam. <laughs> Except that's not even our topic. So fuck. I don't know. I don't know what to do with that. So a direct quote from this article again. So sorry I didn't cite it. Says people with higher self of steam. I did it again. I thought you did it on purpose. I did not. People with 
a higher self-esteem, report to have more confidence, happier moods, and less drug and alcohol use. Those with low self-esteem may be too hard on themselves, fail to take action as they lack self-confidence, devalue their uniqueness, and struggle with boundaries. So I thought that that definition was important and also a very good demonstration of the concept of self-love and self-esteem being interchangeable. I disagree with them being interchangeable, but I want you to hear us say, if you go looking for information on this and you go to do your own research, just because something says self-esteem doesn't mean you should shy away from it because it's possible that the author of that information just doesn't recognize the difference between self-esteem and self-love and they are not the same and yet sometimes people confuse them and they talk about them the same so I'm just saying look into it if it seems janky and it's not what you're looking for walk away from it but don't discredit it just because it says self-esteem So not only did I find the soft science aspect of it, I also went and found some statistics because I know how much you love statistics and I'm not sure what this is or why we're doing it, but we are. So my next question was, is this nature versus nurture? And I honestly think it's both. Like, I'm just going to disclaimer. I think it's both. I do. I recognize that in my personal experience, I believe there was a time that I had self-love, but I also recognize that I have experienced things in my life that have completely deprived me of the opportunity of self-love. A simple example of that would be an abusive relationship, and that could mean anybody. Abusive relationship doesn't necessarily mean a romantic relationship. I just think that that's important also for people to recognize is that you could have self-love today and you could fall madly in love with somebody who treats you like a fucking piece of shit and beats the shit out of you every day. And guess what? In two years, you won't love yourself anymore. And you have lost that because somebody else took it from you. Part of self-love is setting those boundaries to ensure that no one can ever take it from you. Because the only person that you are guaranteed to go to bed with every single night the rest of your fucking life is you. So please be comfortable with that before you start talking about somebody else fixing you. If I could stand in ovation that and still talk into the mic, I would. I love your full-blown round of applause. This is so fantastic. I love that moment. I'll make you an award. Thank you. I'm curious if you're clapping because you love that I said it or you love that I, Celeste, have finally realized what I just said. I'm curious which it is. Both because you said it because you realized it. Okay. I mean, I could have also said it because of research, but yes, I did realize this. So this is a big deal. Are you? Sh- I'm sorry. Compliment. I- I'm sorry. Are you shushing me? Yes, I am. Since when did we shush each other? When did shushing come into play? Cut all that. Take the compliment. Next section. (laughs) When did shushing come into play? I also don't know what just happened, but I just had like a... (laughs) You were were like techno dancing by yourself. like that goth music video the mariah carey video without the fucking music (laughs) especially because you're wearing a big black hoodie like this is so perfect okay (laughs) i need to i need to i would totally hang with those i know you would i wouldn't but i know you would i'll wait in the car i'll be your ride Because who knows? Those people drop acid. You know they do. So if you need a designated driver, I got you. I'll be on the other end of the overpass waiting. <laughs> Did you have a good time at the goth rave? Yeah, I got this like necklace candy. I got, I got this candy necklace. It makes my tongue numb. And it makes me see purple. Let's go home now. <laughs> okay. Oh, anyways. 
So this statistical approach that I took, I found an article called 11 Facts About Teens and Self-Esteem by DoSomething.org. Disclaimer, I recognize that throughout this entire article about self-esteem, they meant self-love, but they called it self-esteem. A prime example of a solid resource that used the wrong word. So number one, low self-esteem is a thinking disorder in which an individual views themselves as inadequate unlovable, and or incompetent. Once formed, this negative view permeates every thought, producing faulty assumptions and ongoing self-defeating behavior. Point number one, a really solid point. Two, among high school students, 44% of girls and 15% of guys are attempting to lose weight. Did you attempt to lose weight in high school? I was nothing. I probably should have put on weight. That's fair. I did. I was on diet pills when I was in high school. Wow. Yeah. That high schoolers should never be on diet pills. I just want everybody to hear me say that. Yeah. Agreed. That's a whole other topic. Oh my God. Definitely. And I want to be clear. I put myself on them. Nobody put me on them. I did that myself. Okay. That's like part of why that's important for me to say. I did that because that's how much I just hated my body. Number three, over 70% of girls ages 15 to 17 avoid normal daily activities such as attending school when they feel bad about their looks. Have you ever done that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, fuck yeah. Like bad hair day. Oh, my God, mom. I think I have strep throat. (laughs) Totally guilty of that. Mine was more like I was teased mercilessly in high school for my looks. So, yeah. Yeah. Okay, I really wasn't being as shallow as a bad hair day. I was sort of trying to make a joke of it, but then you got really serious about it. So you're right. Oh, no, no, no. I w- Your experience. I wasn't trying to discredit that. Like, I totally appreciate the levity of the situation that are some high school emotions. Some of those examples. Yeah. Yes. But I also appreciate the reality of how heavy your answer was and how directly related your answer is to this concept. Of course, children who are bullied don't want to go to school because they aren't going to find love there and they don't love themselves. And it's just easier to hate yourself by yourself than it is to be surrounded by kids who remind you how much you fucking suck. Yep. So I get it. That's a real thing. And I appreciate you sharing that perspective because that's just as real as my funny, not so funny, haha, bad hair day thing, which is real. But again, a humorous example. Number four, more than 40% of boys in middle school and high school regularly exercise with the goal of gaining muscle mass. I thought that number was outrageous. 40% of boys starting in middle school are working out to gain muscle mass. Yeah, that's crazy, especially considering that boys hit puberty later and like I don't know, society is just insane. We push we push kids to be adults in these unrealistic standards that aren't even a thing that should be way too soon. And I'm just going to end that rant there because I could go on for fucking ever. So And I'm sure we'll have an episode about it, so stay tuned. Number five, 75% of girls with low self-esteem reported engaging in negative activities like cutting, bullying, smoking, drinking, or disordered eating. This compares to the 25% of girls with high self-esteem. So truly, on this scale, according to this research, you were either one or the other, and the ratio was a 75% to a 25%. There was no middle ground. There were no girls that were interviewed that were like, yeah, some days are better than others. It was either, no, I participate in these things and I have low self-esteem or I don't participate in these things and I have high self-esteem. If that is an accurate depiction, I don't know. There probably are girls who fall in the middle, but also I feel like collectively these numbers are very representative of my experience in high school. I can say that I knew girls in high school who had high self-esteem who did things like smoking and drinking and such just because it was high school and it was experimenting and it was fun. Myself, it wasn't... And popular. Like, it was a social thing. Yeah, exactly. Myself, it wasn't to fill a void. Like, those vices per se weren't vices for me it was literally just a social thing like 
It was party time. And I didn't drink in high school anyway. Actually, no, I went to two parties in high school. But yeah, the cutting thing, obviously. I think the bullying aspect is also really important. And I'm sure I I know I want to have an episode about bullying. We've never talked about it before, but I'm sure we'll have an episode about bullying because I think it's a really fucking big topic to talk about. But I personally recognize in high school, I was a bitch. I was a super bitch. I was nice because I'm a nice person right? And I was of the position that I wanted to make other people happy. That was important to me. So I would do that. I was totally willing to do that. But at the same time, I was a mean girl. Like I know that. I was a preppy, bitchy, my shit doesn't stink, cooler than you girl. Okay. Here is Celeste saying that. (laughs) I'm just being really honest with everybody. There's some background. But I recognize now that I was an asshole because I just I had no self-love and there is no one ever on this planet that I have ever been meaner to than myself. So for any person who I have ever offended in my life or maybe bullied or maybe was a mean girl to, I want you to hear that I'm sorry, but I also want you to hear me say anything that I could have done to you or I had done to you, I promise What I was doing to myself on the inside was 10 times uglier. That doesn't excuse my behavior. That's not an excuse for what I did or why. I'm just offering an explanation and a perspective. I hope in me sharing that other people recognize either their own behaviors or their children's behaviors or if their children are experiencing bullies. This is something important to talk about with your kids because they're the first people who are going to experience it and really not know what the fuck is happening when they do. The next point is about 20% of teens will experience depression before they have reached adulthood. And we have talked about, even in our depression episode, the fact that children can experience depression. That's a real thing. I would like us to at some point revisit that topic specifically as it relates to kids because I think it is so important. But the fact that this article hit it and it was directly related to this topic it had to be shared. The next point is teen girls that have a negative self-view of themselves are more likely by four times to participate in activities with boys that they later regret. Does that does that ring any bells for you? Um, Not with that particular thought in mind per se. Like, I don't think I was looking to fill a void in that manner, really. I honestly can't look back at my teen self and say yes or no. Those were very confusing times. <laughs> That's fair. I respect that. I do. I'm going to open that question up to our listeners. Obviously, we're not going to sit here and wait for you to text us or tweet us to respond because obviously we need to keep going with this episode. But dear listeners, I'm opening that up to you and asking if anybody has experienced that and they can recognize that within themselves as a teenager. If you tell me or not, you don't have to. Like, again, just being honest with yourself. That's what I'm asking you to do right now. Be honest with yourself about that. Have you ever experienced that? Can you attest that to things that you have found in yourself as an adult, what does that look like? Like really ask yourself those questions. Number eight, the top wish among all teen girls is for their parents to communicate better with them directly. This includes frequent and more open conversations. The fact that teen girls said this, I don't think should be surprising, but I personally want to make that statement about teen boys as well. Parents of teenagers, talk to your fucking children. And when I say talk to your fucking children, I actually mean listen to your fucking children. Have real conversations with your kids and that's a two-way street, boy or girl. I am super disappointed that this article says teen girls feel this way because I know for a fact that there are teen boys who also feel this way who just weren't in a position to say that they wish their parents had more open and honest conversations with them. So this is me saying that for those boys, because they're out there, they're real, and they want your help. Hear, hear. That's honestly one of my goals. Like, I want to make sure that Moose can come to us for anything. Absolutely. 
That's also my goal as his aunt. Like I want him to know he can come to me for absolutely anything. There are things that I will relay to you, but also there's a certain level of trust that will be sacred between us that I won't tell you things. And it's not because I'm keeping a secret from you. It's because I'm keeping his trust between us. If there's something concerning, obviously I will tell you that. But if he comes to me and tells me something in confidence that isn't a life threat thing, I'm not going to break his trust to tell you that. And I know that you wouldn't want me to. Yeah, exactly. And I know the same can be said about tiny for you and Nick. I know she knows that. It's a different conversation, obviously, because she's a little older. So she herself can recognize that. But that's a two-way street. And as people who love children, specifically in this conversation, we're talking about tiny and moose. But if you have children in your life you love, that's your job as the adult to be that place to turn. That's literally your fucking job as the adult. Number nine, 38. Oh my God, this one blew my mind. This one blew my mind. Not because it's surprising, but because it's heartbreaking. 38 percent of boys in middle school and high school have reported to use protein supplements and nearly six percent have admitted to experimenting with steroids middle school boys have admitted to using steroids have i mentioned i hate society (laughs) their bodies literally aren't even fucking developed and they're like let's do some roids Uh uh-uh no fuck that fuck that. Not only do I have a problem with children using steroids, but I also have a problem with children thinking they're not good enough and needing to use steroids. As the adult, step in, say something, help. Look at that. That's real. Here's the thing. Working on a specific body aesthetic at an appropriate age for your own satisfaction, 100%. Here for it. My... uh, My brother is an incredible example for it, but he's doing it because it gives him pleasure, not for societal standards. Shout out to Adam. We love you. And he enjoys the physical exertion of it. So to me, that's a different maple. As just so cute. As just a lady. To me, that's a different thing entirely, obviously, than what we're talking about, but I don't know. I just felt like I needed to say that. No, I think it's important. I do. I think it's important. And maybe I'm going to say it a little different, but I know that your thought was disrupted a couple times, primarily by me and also by Maple. So I'm going to say this again, but I think what you're saying is if you want to work on your body, if that is what makes you love yourself, do it. Go for it. I, Celeste, am in the process of doing that. I want to love my body. So I'm spending a lot of time in the gym. I equate those two things in both success and in visible results. However, the distinguishing factor here is I'm choosing to do that for myself. What you're saying is unhealthy is when when someone, regardless of their age, chooses to start that journey in the hopes of attaining this thing for someone else. That's unhealthy. Yes, exactly. That's what you were trying to say? Yep. The next bullet point is seven in 10 girls believe that they are not good enough or don't measure up in some way, including their looks, performance in school, and relationships with friends and family members. I don't know the statistical numbers among boys because this article did not say that, but I, again, would be very curious what those numbers would actually look like if boys honestly reported in taking these surveys. And do you know how I know that boys did not honestly take these these surveys because they're teenage boys and teenage boys are under the impression they're not allowed to talk about this shit. So I know that on their little tests, they did not tell the truth about these answers because that means that they would have to be talking about this shit and they're not. I concur. (laughs) Number 11, the last point of this article, a girl's self-esteem is more strongly related to how she views her own body shape and weight than how much she actually weighs. Again, I think that's real for boys too. I'm just going to say that again in just a way that makes sense. So people, I'm taking it away from the article, which says a girl's, but I find that people are very likely to relate the way that they feel and the way that they look to an actual importance versus the physical number on the scale. So your number on the scale could be, I'm literally picking a number, 
124 pounds, but if you feel like you look like 224 pounds, but you're really 124 pounds, the number on the scale does not matter. You're ignoring that number completely. At that point, you see yourself from a lens of significantly heavier. 124 pounds in this example is heavy for this person who sees themselves this way. Even though 124 pounds is incredibly light, this person has now very negatively associated that number with what they see and what they feel. And now 124 pounds is drastically overweight, even though it's not. Yeah, it's a type of body dysmorphia. It absolutely is. Stay tuned for an episode about body dysmorphia. But in this episode specifically, that dysmorphia is directly related to self-love. So why are these points important for ourselves as adults? Because in order to have self-love, we have to embrace every version of ourselves that we have ever been. This is what I was talking about before in the sense of we have all experienced something. We all have versions of ourselves that have gotten us to the point we are in today. This is that same concept. We don't have to like all of it, but loving yourself includes forgiveness and acceptance. It's both necessary and okay. It's okay to do. Forgiving the versions of yourself that you don't like is normal, okay? It's part of healing. It's, it's, it's okay. I go back to that. It's just, it's okay. Just do it. And to get to the core of self-love, we must connect with every version of ourselves that has started the cycle of self-hate. And I really just, my only advice is to find that version, which is likely a kid, and love the shit out of that kid. Like your life depends on it because it probably does. In any context of that meaning, I'm not even taking it in the most dramatic sense. I mean, your life, your quality of life depends on how much you love that kid or that version of yourself. So why wouldn't you do that to the fullest extent? Why would you stop yourself from living a beautiful fucking life, even if that means you don't get the dream job or you don't get the dream partner or you don't get the dream car or you don't get the dream dog? You can still live a beautiful, amazing fucking life simply because you love yourself, simply because you found the courage to find that broken kid or that broken version and to just love yourself relentlessly and unapologetically and to forgive yourself and to move forward. There is no amount of money in the world that will make you happier than knowing that you are in a place of pure and unconditional love for yourself. And that is so fucking important. And I wish more people said it like that. Agreed. So I did a quick social poll, social experiment, social survey, social, 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 what's up? So I did a quick little social poll on my Facebook and my Twitter and just ask some of my personal friends what they do to show themselves self-love. And some of the answers are as follows. Amanda K, shout out to Amanda. We love you. We miss you. You're beautiful. That's just, I had to say that. Manda said, I've learned to be kinder to myself, more accepting of my flaws and telling myself that I am beautiful because of them, not in spite of them. Um, fun fact, you are fucking beautiful and I deeply love you and you are literally one of the most incredible people I know. All of those things. Dahlia M said, self-love is being gentle with yourself. It's accepting, healing, It's loving the journey, even the darker parts of the ride. Self-love is upholding boundaries and being aware of taking things personally. The taking things personally actually was a really huge component for me that I hadn't recognized until I read Dahlia's comment. And I want to just expand on that just ever so slightly. I have, until this journey of self-love, I have always been the person who struggles with rejection in any sense of the word, whether that be a grade or a relationship or a work thing. I just don't handle rejection well. I I have never been that person to the extent where if I was casually talking to somebody and they just ghosted, right? Like, because that's super normal. I mean, it's stupid and it shouldn't happen. It's really disrespectful, but normal nonetheless. I would take that ghosting so personally and I would think something's wrong with me. Part of that I can attest is my lack of self-love. Part of it I can attest is the trauma response that I have built over the years from actual, genuine, 
trauma. And I I recognize those things. And shout out to me being honest with myself and with you because that might have been TMI, but it's part of this episode. I honestly feel that way. But I'm to the point now where I can say, if someone were to ghost me, I give exactly zero fucks. That's their loss. That's their problem. And I need everybody else who's listening to this episode to also get to that point. But previous to reading the words from Dahlia in the way she said it, I didn't recognize that taking things personally when they shouldn't be was because of my lack of self-love. And I really, really appreciated that she said that. Josh R. said, self-love means making sure that I'm giving myself positive attention. Sometimes it's as straightforward as going to the gym or eating healthy. Other times it's needing to ignore the house chores, sitting down, reading, or decompressing. Even a little getaway to a different city. Self-care is all about acknowledging your mind and your body in some positive way. I actually also just want to expand on Josh's point, which is fantastic, but making the mind and body meet, that's in my opinion, like the ultimate way to express self-love. Our girl Sydney said, drop acid and scream at the moon. And I loved that answer and it had to be in here. (laughs) Sydney, I just have to call you out and say that every time I think of you, I think of Stevie Nicks. So... I don't know if that's good or bad in your mind, but... I completely agree. Sid has such Stevie Nicks vibes, and I personally am here for it. Dana L. said, knowing when to say no, knowing when to walk away from a situation, whatever it may be, and learning to know and accept your own flaws with the pure intention of change for yourself. Shout out to Dana. Dana is in our Black Women Matter episode, and I honestly, that was so meaningful to me also. Not only in the knowing when to say no and respecting your boundaries, like yes, that is huge and we definitely hit that part, but accepting your flaws with the pure intention of changing for yourself. I love that Dana said that because that is legitimate. An actualization of that not working is when your diets fail or when you won't hold yourself accountable to do things that you know you need to do for yourself. That's a form of self-torment, of self-hate, of denying yourself the accountability of fulfilling a task that you've set for yourself. That's totally fucked. Stop doing that. Don't do that. But Dana's point about self-love being I have the genuine intention of doing this for myself because it will make me happy. That is self-love. And I just, mm, Dana, I love you. Thank you for sharing that with us. Thank you for sharing that with our listeners in a way that I was really struggling to put in words. So thank you. My own personal sub bullet to that thought is situations could also refer to family members. Like we said this in the bye 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 episode, but also like family can be really fucking toxic. Toxic relationships can come from family. So don't ever hesitate to end those or readjust those or have a very real conversation about how those people are directly affecting your view of yourself because nobody gets to disturb that peace for you even if they're family. Monet B said, some days it's PJs in my bed scrolling through TikTok and a face mask. Some days it's loud music, hoop earrings, and dancing to a twerk station on Spotify around my house. And I personally deeply related to that response as well. And I thought that was a really good example of self-love on a, a high energy day and on a low energy day because both happen. I love all of these. Do you have any you want to add? I can tell you I've done every single one. I love that. I think that's just as valuable as saying how much you appreciate them because I agree. I am not only learning how to do some of these things, but I have also implemented some of these things. And I mean, I can attest, I I recognize a difference. So there's a method to this madness and it is correct. I guess this isn't really a form of expressing self-love and I don't really know what part you have next, but I kind of had this in mind just as a thought as we went along. And I think one big portion of self-love that, and I guess correct me if I'm wrong, if my thoughts on this aren't, are like way off in outer space, but society has such a negative impact on how we feel about ourselves. And part of self-love is learning to shirk that expectation. Like not only do we need to start saying fuck it to what people think of us, I mean, obviously within reasons, like there are societal expectations that are there for a reason. I'm not talking about don't go around like punching people in the face. 
unless they're racist. I wish I wish we could do that. Shout out to the racist specifically in that scenario. Or they're bullying somebody. But I'm talking about people that say you need to look a certain way or act a certain way or that you need to adhere to what you see on TV or you can't listen to this music or you can't wear those clothes or you can't you can't be into X, Y, or Z. Tyler said it perfectly in our Bye 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 episode listing off what he was and he said, I'm Tyler. Tyler, that's exactly what everybody needs to be. They need to be themselves. And part of that is accepting that society is not going to give that to you. You need to own who you are yourself. You need to say fuck it to caring what society thinks and stop expecting society to give you self-love. That's not going to happen. Not only society though, and I really fucking appreciate that you said this. I loved literally every single second of what you said, but it's not just society is not going to give you self-love. You're never going to find self-love in a partner. It does not matter if you find the most amazing, incredible, beautiful, selfless partner you've ever imagined. You could still find the perfect partner and be miserable because you don't love yourself. That's not their fault. They can't fix you. And no matter how much they love you and no matter how much they want to fix you, they'll never be able to do that for you. Does that mean that you're going to live a miserable, terrible life with this person? No, it doesn't. I know many successful marriages where there is a lack of self-love, but there is love between the two of them. That's called codependency. Although it can be unhealthy, it isn't always unhealthy but truly in comparison to self-love it is unhealthy and I just as someone who has recognized recently that I have been my whole life going about this wrong and looking for self-love in the wrong place because I thought I was just looking for love, I set myself up for failure. As humans we're not looking for love, we're looking for self-love and love follows and yet we're not taught that we're not taught that that's how it works every disney princess movie ever is about some poor unfortunate girl who just wants to be just a tiny bit better at something and then she gets the prince right? I mean, whether you're a Disney fan or not, that's truly how society raises human beings. And really the correct practice is to love yourself and then everything else follows. And I know that that's cliche and I know that that's a fucking terrible thing to hear because when you're struggling with self-love, it's not that easy. I hear you. I get it. I know. I'm not being cliche. It is real. It is a very real practice and experience, and there's nothing on the fucking planet like it. And I can tell you that any love that comes my way now, whether that's from you or Kelly or Tiny or my family, it doesn't matter. That love is so much more fulfilling to me now than it ever has been in my life because I love myself first. And I've never done that before. And I want everyone to get to that place. On that point too, It's expressed that part of self-love is accepting compliments as they are, but compliments mean nothing if you don't believe them. So you need to start buying into it. You need to literally start viewing yourself through other people's eyes and you need to make that conscious effort to do so. It's reframing your mindset to see yourself for who you are and not for who society expects you to be or who this construct you're supposed to be. I agree completely. This That last sentence I said make no sense. <laughs> no, it does. It does. It does make sense, especially as I think about the way that we as humans are raised. A lot of us were raised in environments where right, wrong, or indifferent, our parents were just doing the best that they could, and they tried to raise little miniature versions of themselves in an effort to spare us from mistakes and heartache and trauma, right? But mistakes and heartache and trauma are a very normal part of life. They suck and I wish that they didn't have to happen, but that's not reality. So our parents tried to protect us from pain in setting us on the path that they themselves have been on rather than allowing us as individuals to experience our own path. And in that, we end up hating ourselves because I'm not my mother. I'm not my dad. I'm not my stepdad. I'm none of those people. 
And yet each one of them expected me to be like them. And I'm not. I'm just Celeste. On the flip side, my sister is a good example. My sister is a little mini fucking prototype of my parents. Again, right, wrong, or indifferent. If my sister is happy with that, then she is. And if she loves herself that way, she does. And that's amazing. But also, it's okay if she doesn't. It's okay if she wants to be her own person. And I think that, again, I don't think it's ill-intended. I don't think that adults set children up for failure. I'm not saying that, but I think that inadvertently it happens because we take away children's individual identity so soon and we need to normalize allowing children to be themselves so they don't spend their youth trying to understand who they are and that they are not their parents. Instead, they could be spending their youth identifying who they are actually are because it's a blank slate rather than undoing this preconceived notion. And that's where I think that this huge flaw comes in. Again, I don't think anybody does this intentionally. It also, like we said earlier, it doesn't pay to blame. There's no point in pointing fingers. It's just a matter of growth and how you move forward. If there's trauma that needs to be addressed, address it. But also don't dwell there. There's no point. Forgive, move on, and love. I was one of those lucky children that I wasn't raised to model after my parents at all. My parents were very accepting of me, as quirky as I was. Uh, Society was just a bitch. (laughs) The societal component is super important. And I'm really sorry if I diverted too much to make it sound like society was not a huge focus. It is. It is. But all of it together, individual pieces and compounded can be detrimental to an entity that does not have self-love. And I don't even want to say children or teenagers because that's not fair at this point in the conversation as that theory applies because that could be anyone of any age who does not love themselves, including men. Men get a specific call out on this because again, this is all very emotional. And I know that there are some dudes who are like, this is some sappy ass shit and I can't handle this because I don't speak this language. That's cool. That's fine. You don't have to speak this language with us, but you deserve to speak this language with yourself and your children deserve you to speak this language with them. I would also argue that your partner deserves you to speak this language with them, but I'm not making presumptions that anybody has a partner, but children children deserve this. We ourselves deserve this. There we go. So some resources that I wanted to throw out there that I have found specifically about self-love that I think are fantastic. The first book that I have to reference, I've actually read this book. The book is What the Heck is Self-Love Anyway by Jonathan Asley. And I'm not going to really dissect this for you. That's not what I'm about, but specifically, the author of this book talks about how at one point in his life, he did not have self-love and he found self-love in his son dying, which sounds so fucked up and I can't even imagine. I genuinely can't imagine because I have always been of the position of saying, if something happened to my child, I would not be here. And I can attest previously in my life, I know that's true. If Tiny were not on this planet at a point in my life, there's no way I would have been on this planet either. There's no way I would have ever tried to live life without her. There's no way. But the author of this book takes the position that self-love is acknowledging that your life can continue. Your life deserves to continue regardless of that loss. That doesn't mean that that loss doesn't hurt. That doesn't mean that that loss will ever stop hurting. It's not diminishing anything about that experience other than the fact that you yourself deserve to love yourself enough to continue to live. And then he expands on it and he talks about examples and and ways to practice self-love and all of that shit. And it's beautiful. But truly, I want you guys to hear me say his experience is deeply rooted in the loss of his son. And as a parent, that shit hit me. And the first time I read it, I was like, there's no way. Mm -mm. Nope. Nope. 
nope, something happened to Tiny, no fucking way. I would check out real quick, like early checkout fee, put it on my tab. I don't really care. But I can now say I'm of the position of I never want anything to happen to my child and I would literally protect her with my life. But I'm of the position now where I understand if something happened to her, I would be devastated and my life would never be the same, but I could continue to live. And that's self-love, genuinely. That is self-love. Other resources include Don't Forget to Fix Your Crown by Derek Jackson. He's so fucking fine and a fucking genius. And I just, I love everything about him. He's fucking amazing. I also have Choosing Me Before We by Christina Ario. Ario? I don't know. I'm guessing on her last name at this point. So specifically with a male emphasis, I also found Why Did I Do That by Joseph Burugo, B-U-R-G-O. Another male emphasized resource is Can't Hurt Me, Master Your Mind and Defy the Odds by David Goggins. And I also found The Man in the Mirror, Solving 24 Problems Men Face by Patrick Morley. And there are resources out there for women. Okay, again, I listed a female author. But I truly want men to have resources at their fingertips. Women already have resources at their fingertips. Literally, every article that I could find was geared towards women. I mean, even the the teenager one only had a couple bullet points about boys and the rest of them were about girls. Y'all know why we think that is a thing, but I go back to there need to be more resources for men. It needs to be acceptable for men to find those resources. And dear men, I just gave you a couple. So if this is something you struggle with, now you have a place to start because you deserve it. And that, you guys, is our episode on self-love. May I ask you what you've learned here today? I learned a lot. Okay, so I learned a lot, but honestly, my favorite part of everything was hearing your introspection on it because this has been in the making for a long time. AKA our whole friendship. And it felt like it felt like the heavens opened up. I don't even believe in angels when I heard them. Uh, I really appreciate that. I really do. I am super uncomfortable with that because that is such a fantastic compliment. (laughs) And I don't like it and it gives me anxiety and I don't know what to say to that because that is such a fantastic compliment, but I'm really trying and I just want you to know how much that means to me because obviously making you proud is something that is important to me because I love you. Self-love or not self-love, making you proud is something that is always important to me. You being proud is something that is always important to me. So you saying that really hits me right in the feels. And I'm doing my very best to not cry and I'm terribly accepting this compliment. Thank you for the compliment. Did I do it? Did, did Did I do it? You're welcome. I don't know if that speech could be an Emmy speech, but... I don't know if you could have made that any more uncomfortable, but you did. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. What that. did you learn here today? Um, I learned <laughs> I learned <laughs> I learned I learned that my honesty has no limits to the point where I can <laughs> I legitimately filtered nothing from this episode. I was very open and honest and raw with you guys. I mean I held nothing back and I have no regrets in that. I I genuinely don't. And I'm, I learned that. I, I learned that I was able to be honest with myself and with you guys at the same time about something that I have struggled with my entire life. And I'm very proud of myself for that. I learned that I was able to actually successfully do that. And that's a really fucking big deal for me. Does that count? Does that, does that count as an I learned here today? I think that counts. Okay. Fantastic. Uh, so I just want to end this whole self-love speech moment, soapbox, with 
We are sending love and light and big hugs to every single person who is on their journey for self-love, whether that starts with this episode or it's something that you have been working on or it's something that you decide that you want to approach soon. It is your pace. It is your decision. It is your life. We just want you to know that we are here cheering you on every step of the way. Yep, yep. I also personally want you to know that if you are in a position where you would like to celebrate your self-love or you need a direction, please don't hesitate to reach out to us. We are here. Our DMs are open. We are here to listen. We are not here to fix you or judge. We're just here as your friends because that's what we believe in here. So you can reach out to us, but I am going to let Allie tell you how to do that because... Y'all need to hear her beautiful little voice a little bit more in this episode. (laughs) Take it away, Allie. I'm just shaking my head at beautiful voice because some people highly dislike it. I'm sorry. Are you denying a compliment? (laughs) Fuck those people. Fuck those people. Who who are those people? I'll go fucking punch them. So you can reach us at Taboos the Pod on Instagram and Twitter. It's just Taboos on Facebook. (gasps) You did it! Yes! It's Taboos Podcast on Gmail. (laughs) (laughs) I love that we always fuck up one, but they rotate. It's a different one every time. That's my favorite. So to clarify, because I can never get anything right in this, taboospodcast at gmail.com. We have a Patreon. If you want to support this thing, it's in the show notes. There are tiers beginning at just five bucks a month to help us keep moving this forward. And there are some cool things there, including just more of the ludicrousness that is us. The ludicrous that is us. Luda! Move, bitch. Get out the way. Get out the way. Get out the way. I love Luda. Oh my god, I love Luda. Now I need to know, what's your favorite Luda song? It's okay if he's featuring. Oh my god, I don't I don't even know. I'd have to think. Mine is Ride by Sierra. Call me Luda Drew Breeze. I throw it in. I'd have to like go back and look at his track list in all honesty. Amateur. It was a very serious question. It was. It was literally the most serious part of this whole episode. And I'm super disappointed. I just have to give it I just have to give it thought. Okay. You keep me posted. I'm not gonna Google it. This will take forever. I'm not gonna okay. Google it. I'll get back to you. You keep me posted. You let me know. In addition to our information to reach out to us, also in the event that you really appreciated either this episode or a perspective that we've shared in a previous episode, please don't hesitate to share us or rate us or I was going to say send us to somebody who would benefit from listening, but that in essence is called sharing. So I definitely already said that. Um, So here's me saying it again. And now I don't work here anymore. Please consider this as my resignation because I totally fucked this up. (laughs) Magic. I just want to tell you while you were doing that whole thing. (laughs) That, whatever that was. I googled ludicrous track (laughs) Yeah, what'd you find? The first website to come up is oldies.com. Shut up. Get out I'm of here. Personally that's, offended. That's just we are not old. I'm super offended by that. I'm not fucking old. Ludacris is not oldies. It's ludicrous that Ludacris is on an oldies list. Fuck whoever made that. For real. Axel, please don't mess with my mixer. Oh god, Area Codes was such a good song. Ooh, yes it is. Anyways, please continue with that whole thing. No, I super forfeited that whole thing. I don't want to go back. <laughs> I think the only thing that I want to just say right before we end, because we're going to say it anyway, to your point earlier, Allie, about just being yourself and being honest and being true to yourself, I want every single person to hear us say, to hear me say specifically, because I'm not speaking for you, but I feel like this applies to you. So if it does, please join me. But I want you guys to hear me say that this podcast is an expression of self-love for me. Knowing that myself and my best friend being nothing other than ourselves and being honest with you and you guys benefiting from it in some way, whether that's entertainment or perspective or representation those things combined that is my version of self-love so i just want to thank 
each and every one of you for being on my self-love journey with me, whether that means somebody who's actually physically doing this with me or you're just along for the ride and you're listening to our podcast. I can't tell you what each and every one of you mean to me in that regard. And when we say, do you be taboos, we really mean be yourself and love yourself because you deserve that. And it doesn't matter what society has to say about it. I couldn't have said it better. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Okay. (laughs) So then, now, uh, as always... Do you be taboos? Bum ba bum. bum.